What are we gonna do about that, Morgan? Huh? What are we gonna do about that, baby girl? 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 for my May haul. <laughs> Let's jump right in, shall we? The first couple of books I got were library books because I didn't own them already and I got them for certain reading challenges. The first one was an attempt to get a reading group started with my family members and the first person who responded and wanted to actively read something with me was my cousin. She asked for Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I am genuinely not sure if this is even the first book. Like I, I see all these different covers on the back and I, I'm still not sure I got the right book. And so I may not even get to this. I, I have some plans leading up to an October series of reviews. And so I don't know, this may have to wait. I'm not even sure if um, my cousin is reading it right now. But I had to start two stacks here because when I tried to stack them all together for my thumbnail picture, it all fell over. So we'll have to figure something out here. There we go. Next is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I got this for the Scally Wagathon and I talked there about how I didn't want to annotate a library book. Well, I ended up doing it anyway because I was just, I was struggling so much and I didn't even get that far. I do want to finish it. It's one of the books that I started in 2016 when I tried to do this channel the first time. So at the very least, I want to finish it one time. I'm not positive it's going to be a high review, but I'm in the middle of it. So next is the book that I'm supposed to finish in June for the Feminist Orchestra, and that is Brick Lane by Monica Ali. I assume it's Ali. It's about a woman who has been um, more or less taken, I mean, not terribly willingly, from her village in Bangladesh to London as a much, much younger bride of a Bangladeshi man who is a career guy and how she's struggling with not really knowing any English at all except a few words and the isolation of that. Um, it's, it's a very interesting prose style, so I'm not sure it's going to be one of my favorite books ever, but I can understand why um, it got such critical success, I guess. So we'll try and wrap that up. Those are all my library books then. So lastly, a book that you guys have already seen as well. If you watched the Scallywagathon TBR or vlog, that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I specifically picked this up in preparation for Scallywagathon, knowing that I wanted to annotate it, and clearly I did. Um, because again, this was another book that I started in 2016, but I started it as a library book. And so I got completely through it. I am gonna do a full review here pretty soon. It's gonna be somewhere in a four to five. Like I, I did genuinely enjoy it. I just need a little bit more time <laughs> to mull over it. But I did end up picking up a real copy for discounted price. So huzzah for that. Next is from my preparation for the Ryardathon. I am not going to need a lot of these books until July and August because my Ryardathon goes from June, July, and August because Rick Riordan has so many books in the Percy Jackson Extended Universe that I just, I knew that there was no way I was going to be able to cram it into a month. And at this point, being such a small channel, I knew that I had to largely do this for myself. And I'm trying to clean out my bookshelf. This is, <laughs> this is a little bit more chatty than I wanted. Watching so much of Kayla over at Books and Lala, I realized why, as a booktuber, she has a read and an unread shelf and why she has a really excited about TBR shelf and the 
I'll get to it eventually TBR closet. So anyway, what that made me think about here recently was the fact that I wanted to go back through a bunch of books that I have read or I started, write real Goodreads reviews for them, and then start my own red shelf and still try to segment it out by category of genre because largely I still think of stuff in terms of genre, especially in terms of what I'm interested in reading um, and what might fulfill some of these readathon prompts to try and help me get through my massive 2200 uh, TBR. So that's why I did this Riotathon was ultimately for myself that I knew I have read a majority, it may be a simple majority, but it, at least 50% of the books and of, of the word count that Rick Riordan has put out into the world, I have read a solid chunk of them. So if there's any series that I could get through and write real reviews for, it would be that universe worth of stuff. So I got a gift card from a sister of mine back in December for Christmas and I never used it. What I bought with that gift card, it, it didn't pay for everything, but it paid for a solid chunk of these. So this is the most recent Magnus Chase book, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Ship of the Dead. And it's got the nice extra uh, Barnes and Noble exclusive. So of course this is also by Rick Riordan. And then the most recent Trials of Apollo book, The Burning Maze also Barnes & Noble exclusive. Then I got the compilation book of the short stories between Percy Jackson, the, the series Percy Jackson, and the Kane Chronicles series, the main characters in there. I bought the editions of some of the earlier books that actually had the short stories in them, but this is the collection of all of that. So that's great, at least, that I can feel good if I ever get rid of some of my paperbacks and get these nice hardcovers, because I only started getting the hardcovers later on, you know, first week releases kind of thing. So now I don't have to worry about losing the short story collections. Next is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Ultimate Guide. This is one of those extra companion books which I don't know if it has any original short stories in it, again, because I haven't read it. Basically some extra material. I'm gonna count it as a book that I wanna read just because I wanna be able, go figure, right? I wanna be able to talk about it. Good news is that was the last book, so I can start that pile again. So lastly for Percy Jackson, I got The Kane Chronicles, Brooklyn House Magician's Manual, Your Guide to Egyptian Gods and Creatures, Glyphs and Spells, and more. That was a mouthful. But again, it's a companion book for the Cain Chronicles, and I didn't finish the Cain Chronicles. <laughs> I struggled with that one too. Um, I mainly struggled with the writing format, but I'm gonna give it another shot. After all of that, now we have the second pile just spin this whole buddy around. What happened was I came into a little bit of money. No, I came into a very, very little bit of money for performing some services to family member at an emergency condition. So with that, I got a little bit of spending money to go to Half Price Books here locally in Columbus and then McKay's Books while we were down in Tennessee visiting my grandparents. I didn't have to spend the money there, but that's where I chose to spend it. Uh, looks like here on top is the McKay's Run, even though that was the last that The McKay's Run is literally why I couldn't film this until June because we were down in Tennessee until Ju until May 31st, and I wasn't sure what day we were gonna be going to McKay's, and even then, May 31st was our travel day home. So there was no way that this haul was getting filmed in May. This is Robertson Davies' A Gathering of Ghost Stories, and it was 75 cents. It's tiny, 
but it was 75 cents. This goes back to what um, I was alluding to earlier where I have a goal to put out a whole bunch of actual book reviews, not just uh, not just videos or reading vlogs or anything like, but like real reviews in October for some of these classics that are on my TBR that fall under the category of spooky or horror. And again, books that I necessarily wouldn't have picked for myself, but they're books number one that I know I need to read in order to fulfill my goal to inherit the stories. Stuff like, let's just... <laughs> Let's just get it out there. I haven't read Frankenstein, or the original Frankenstein, the whole way through. I have not read Dracula the whole way through. I need to do that at some point. Even if I never write horror for myself, I I need to read them. So something like this, A Gathering of Ghost Stories, was just like perfect. A, a little book, a little tiny book, but after I've read some other gothic stories from the era. I've had some friends on Plurk who have recommended a few additional stories to me and I put out there, it's um, it's at the Lore Master on Plurk. I have a lot of reading friends on that social media platform and I gave them a picture and I asked them, can you recommend any other stories that would fit in this collection? So I'm gonna try and read in particular some of the early spooky novels. So that's what this one is. Next is, ooh, I actually have to talk about, I have to talk about this because um, this is, this is part of the haul, but it was an audiobook that I hauled from the library. And it was the first book in the Elric Saga by Michael Moorcock. And that is a classic fantasy sword and sorcery book uh, series. And the actual name of the first book is called Elric of Melnibone, and that's the character as well, El Elric. Um, supposedly, at least in some small part other than the name, his story inspired Full Metal Alchemist. Or, because again, at least it inspired the last name, Elric. And, I, and having read the book now, or listened to the book, I do think that there's some interesting aspects to it that I that I think FMA shares. But anyway, I went looking. If you if you watched my Scallywagathon vlog, you knew that I was hunting for American Gods because I was looking for a non-library copy so that I could annotate it. I was also looking for an Elric of Melnibone copy, a real physical copy of the book so that I could annotate it while listening, you know, having having listened to the audiobook. So long story short, I didn't find one. I looked. <laughs> uh, but what I did find, I have, I have volume two of the Elric Saga already, which was what made me think about the fact that I wanted to start reading it again. I did find books three, five, and six. So that's The Weird of the White Wolf, The Bane of the Black Sword, and Stormbringer. So I prefer these covers because that's the cover that I've already got for book two. But this was the only version of um, volume three that I could find. And yeah, so <laughs> I really want to find volumes one and four now. I'm trying. Next is Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor. This I got because Jean at Bookish Thoughts mentioned the Binti series and I was genuinely interested in the Binti series but I couldn't find the Binti series at McKay's Books but I recognized the author so I thought well I'll I'll try this one sure. So again uh again talking about Jean over at Bookish Thoughts she and Lauren at Reads and Daydreams are the ones the hosts of the Feminist Orchestra Book Club. Later on in the year we are going to be reading Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. I looked for a copy of Brick Lane, but I couldn't find it. But I did find this. So next we have another great McKay's find. That is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies for 50 cents. I got, uh, I got Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters as well for $2. And then I got Dawn of the Dreadfuls as well 
for 50 cents. I got the entire three part collection for $3. I call that a win. The funny thing is, this is how out of date my Goodreads is. Um, I got home and I realized that I already had a copy of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, but it's the movie tie-in cover. And these three covers at least all look good together. You can tell I've been listening way too much to Kayla recently. I have never cared about covers. <laughs> but again, I'm, I'm more than willing to get rid of the other copy now that I have, that I have these. Again, on the topic of my October plans, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Other Stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. I may have another copy of this already. I know I have some other Robert Louis Stevenson because my grandmother has gifted me a lot of, they're not just old stories, they're physically old books that are like collections of classics and stuff like that. So I was really happy to get that one. Uh, again, on the topic of classics that I may have another copy of and I need to look for, but I don't think so. We have The Three Musketeers by Alexandra Dumas. Next, we have some manga. When Borders was going out of business, Borders used to be, at least here in Ohio, the place that you went to for manga ever since um, Suncoast Media went out of business or at least stopped having physical stores. I abused Suncoast, by the way. I was one of those people who used their point system as much as I possibly could. So when Borders went out of business, I went on another spending spree where I got a whole bunch of collections and that's where I got some of my big collected volumes. So that was when I got most of my Yu Yu Hakusho manga. Randomly, because it was a going out of business sale, they did not have volume three for me to buy. So I've had in my collection this entire time, volumes one and two and four through like what, 21, but I didn't have volume three. So I now have volume three. And my uh, good friend who is a major Yu Yu Hakusho fan that got me into this, re reintroduced me to the series, um, I will be very happy to reread again and, um, you know, get excited about the series again with her now that I actually have the manga to read. Again, on the topic of filling out collections, I think this is the end of it. I have a lot of Veroni Kenshin, a lot, a lot of Veroni Kenshin. And again, without going too deep into it, I am super upset about what's come out now about um, Nobuhiro Watsuki. Because if you had asked me a couple years ago what my favorite manga series was, I would have told you Roni Kenshin. Well, now I'm really upset about what's happened with him. But from a secondhand bookstore perspective, he's not getting any more of the money. The book's, the book's been purchased. So I am trying to at least finish out my collection so I can read it and write a review for it because I certainly know the series. I know the series and I have almost the entire, I do I have the entire anime? I think I have the entire anime from like OVA through the first season. I really think I have the entire thing. I was looking for the collection, the, the thick collected three volumes version so it would match what I've already got. Unfortunately, I couldn't, but there we go. So next we have a series that is gonna show up uh, here in Pride Month again, but the main thing I can tell you is this. This was another, I don't know why it's, vol it, was, <laughs> it was Yu Yu Hakusho volume three and this is volume three. So I cannot tell you, I, can, I don't think I can convey how excited I was to find this particular volume of manga. I, I will try. I will try to explain this to you. Okay. I am one of those people who grew up on gravitation before I understood how problematic it was. And so I have gone back and revised my, my mental image of what 
uh, gravitation was like and the fact that I consumed it because at the time it was the only mass market gay representation that I that I could you know really sink my teeth into so in that respect it did something good but anyway upon reflection of what gravitation was actually depicting about a relationship then um, my friends and I we all started trying to find those better representations right and one of the series that we found is Yellow. So it is uh, the, the mangaka, the author, writer, uh, creator, artist is, is male, which is another rarity, I think. So my friend introduced me to Yellow and said, here, I think you'd really enjoy this. And I was, you know, blown away by it. I love it. I'll do an entire video about that. But she got me volume one. I went out and hunted and found volumes two and four. I could only, I knew a volume three existed and I knew what it contained because I looked on the internet. But for the longest time, I couldn't find this at cons. I couldn't find it, you know, anywhere. Now, the fact that I found this in Tennessee at McKay's bookstore is just like, Wow, because I, I really would have expected if I if I was gonna find it anywhere, I would have expected to find it at a con, I would have expected to pay, you know, full market price. This is this is $13 full price. I would have expected to pay 15, including shipping um, for finding it for your know, finders fee. And I would have expected to pay that at a con. And I didn't have to. I cannot believe that I found it at McKay's of all places. So there you go. Um, I will tell you that 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 little sticker right there is not a lie, which again was part of why I think for me, yellow became the replacement in my mind of gravitation because gravitation was all about, oh my gosh, there's saucy content that like proves that they're gay. Yeah, this good stuff. So that was my spending spree at McKay's. Lastly, we have the books that I got here locally at Half Price Books. So I mentioned my plans for October. I also have plans for February, and that is going to be reading a bunch of my African American studies books that I found and n not, not just fiction, but nonfiction. And then you've got the help. So I've not read it. I have not seen the movie either. And I want to. And not just because I feel like I should, but because I, I genuinely want to know what's in this book. I'm gonna blame Kayla for these. These, because these are all, they all came out of the clearance section at Half Price Books. And she was talking recently about the orange cover for Penguin Books. I've come to realize that I don't think these are exactly the orange covers that she was talking about because her orange covers have a lot more ornamentation on them. So I'm not sure how long these books are going to stay in my possession. But some of them I recognized as, oh, these are by authors. Some of them are by authors of color. So maybe they'll stick around longer. We, and then uh, one or two of them are also by women. So I just wanted to explain that because I don't, I, li I know literally nothing else about them and they all look like near earth fiction, like contemporary stuff, which is not normally my thing at all. And I have no idea if I'm even gonna like these at all, but we've got Wallace Stegner, Angle of Repose, A Light in the Window by Jan Karen, Novel Without a Name, I'm going to try and pronounce this Vietnamese name. Dong Tu Hong. So again, I, I want to read this. I'm going to read the back of the 28 year old Quan Khan, probably Khan, has been fighting for the communist cause in North Vietnam for a decade. Filled with idealism and hope when he first left his village, he now spends his days and nights dodging stray bullets and bombs forging for scraps of food to feed himself and his men. 
Khan seeks comfort in childhood memories as he tries to sort out his con conflicting feelings of patriotism and disillusionment. And this is by a woman, so that'll be interesting for sure. Salaman Rushdie, Harun and the Sea of Stories. And I, I actually really genuinely like this front cover. This, this looked like it was going to fall into the category of, if not folklore, about folklore, which is my jam. So that'll probably work out just fine. Of, of any of them, I expect to like that one the best. Um, and then Anne B. Ross, Miss Julia Hits the Road. And then lastly, if you saw my giant pseudo book haul as I was trying to reorganize all the books that I already own, you saw that I've had hauled as part of the giant half price book summer sale last year, Ink Death and Ink Heart. So I did not have Ink Spell. <laughs> Uh, but now I have it and I am not even sure if the other two copies are hardback or not, but that's it. That's the last of my haul. All right. And look forward to my wrap up. You're not going to believe what just happened. I realized I forgot two books for my May haul. I was unpacking my suitcase from our Tennessee trip and I found two more. So here they are. My grandmother, in the grand tradition of gifting me books because she knows I'm an avid reader, found a book and the author, which is really cool, but it's a cooking book. <laughs> So it's not exactly the kind of thing I can read for booktube. Um, it also, by the way, this thing is a honker. It is so thick. But the author is, uh, I guess it's several authors. I guess she didn't even get it signed, but she got it direct from one of the authors, I guess, is the, is the main thing. My grandmother is a huge social butterfly. She knows everyone in every town that she's ever lived in. I mean, she's she's life goals, really, like long-term life goals. My parents lovingly refer to them, both of my grandparents, as being the busiest retired people that they know, which is true. My grandmother has never missed a rotary meeting. She scheduled major surgery around her rotary schedule so that she still had perfect attendance like it's it's crazy but the point is this is from her so I will cherish it but it's also this is probably the first and last time that you'll see it on a booktube video is the main reason I wanted to present it here the other thing is the only brand new book that I bought this month and so far so far in the history of this channel that came as a recommendation from booktube like in the sense that i knew nothing about it like yes i bought a darker shade of magic um having heard it from common spence but i also knew about it two years ago because because i started reading it um i also bought some new books this month the percy jackson stuff but I knew about the Percy Jackson series before I even started this channel and, I, and I'd been a huge fan long before I knew that booktube even existed. So that's why I say that this is the first booktube made me buy it <laughs> um, kind of book. And that is Children of Blood and Bone, which again, as I understand it, should be up my alley. That's why I went ahead and bought it. Um, it's supposed to be fantasy, it's supposed to be diverse, it's supposed to be own voice, it's supposed to be all the things that I want for this channel, you know, and so I'm taking a chance here. <laughs> and that should wrap up my May haul. <laughs> for real, for real this time. <laughs> Take care.